Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Daily Stand Up. My name is Stu Turley, President and CEO of the Sandstone Group. Today is August 5th, and it is a wild week. We are only 90 some odd days away from the election, so buckle up and hang on. Michael's out on vacation today. So let's take a look at our story, top stories today. Leftists beg the feds to cut interest rates to revive Green New Deal projects. Wow. Didn't see that one coming. Global power demand is soaring. The IEA expects 4% growth in energy in 2024 and 2025. India has issued vesting orders for 10 coal mines. This is coal mines, not power stations. This is coal mines. This is huge. Chevron is taking its headquarters to Texas. I'll tell you what, deindustrialization is happening in California, and they are encouraging it. Ooh. David Blackman continuing EV bloodbath for it leaves Harris with a lot to answer for. And energy policies and deindustrialization go hand in hand. Let's go to the last one here. Shell initiates a $2 billion buyback program. Holy smokes. Great for Shell investors. We're happy to see that. Let's go to the leftist begs feds to cut interest rates to revive Green New Deal projects. This is an amazing story when we sit back and take a look at this. This is from Brett Bart. And let's take a look at this. Sim Force Tim McDonald wrote, but interest rates touch on a particularly sore spot for the industry, its ability to turn a profit in the volatile cutthroat power market. Cheaper borrowing means better margins and gives the industry a buffer, even though it's a small against the political risk to the energy transition from Donald Trump's presidential campaign. Renewables started to go mainstream in the 2010s in a period where interest rates were close to zero, a kind of training wheels for the environment with cheap borrowing made it easier for project developers to deliver on their investors' profit expectations. Jen Harris, the director of the Economy and Society Initiative at the William and Flora Hewlett Foundation, wrote about how the Federal Reserve raising interest rates to fight inflation is slowing our fight against climate change. It's going to happen, folks. Renewable energy has to be sustainable. And if you cannot sustain it on its own merit, then it's truly not sustainable. So physics and fiscal responsibility matter in the grid. So let's go to our next one here. It's not going to be uh, lighting up anytime soon or lightening up. I should say global power demand is soaring. IEA expects 4% growth in 2024 and 2025. Electricity is the most important, fastest growing form of energy. More, more proof that assertion came a few days ago when the IEA released its electricity mid-year update. The Paris-based agency expects global power demand to grow by 4% this year. That's the fastest growth since 2007. This is just crazy. This is from a great Substack article by Robert Bryce. Absolutely love Robert Bryce. You must go follow his podcast. Follow him on his Substack. Follow him on his LinkedIn. He is just a national treasure. Over the last three years, China has been adding an average of roughly one Germany each year in terms of electricity demand. Holy smokes, that is amazing, especially when you consider the deindustrialization of Germany is happening because of the left-leaning policy to green energy, and green energy is not sustainable in its current technology. You cannot support it. Listen to these. this. China dominates the global market for coal at a much greater degree than any other fuel, accounting for 58% of world demand. Wow. It's going to flatten. It's beginning to flatten in China, but coal still accounted for 60% of the energy supply in electrical gener generation. Wow. 
China's coal investment in 2023 were about $110 billion. Wow. Let's roll over to India. India issued vesting orders for 10 coal mines. These mined with a combined reserve of 2,395 million tons are expected to boost the country's energy security and economic growth. They're projected to generate 19 million or an extract, and I believe this is Indian currency, so I'll try to get that in the show notes. Ready in, called on uh, successful bidders to focus on increasing production and cutting imports while emphasizing environmental and sustainability. You can do coal cleaner than just throwing it out there. You can do it properly. There are proper technology that you can use. Hats off to India. Go forth and use coal and do it right. Chevron taking its headquarters to Texas. This is an amazing story when you take a look at Elon, I love Elon Musk and his purchasing of X, his rockets and everything else he's picked up and he's left. We're watching the deindustrialization of New York and California following just like the deindustrialization of Germany, and that is left wing woke energy policies and woke policies will cause companies to leave. And that is billions of tax revenue that Chevron's taking with it. Chevron and its predecessor companies have a long history in the state tracing back to 1879, the founding of the Coast Oil Company. And in 1900, Pacific Coast was bought by John D. Rockefeller's Standard Oil. What they now call create Chevron was created in 1911 under the Standard Oil of California with and then with the breaking up with the Standard Oil monopoly. Chevron grew in great spurts in the past 40 years with big company mergers. And uh, most recently, Chevron paid $13 billion to be an independent producer in Noble Energy during the depths of the 2020 pandemic. And then in October, entered into a $53 billion all-stock deal to merge with Hess. California's leaders made it increasingly clear they no longer value oil and gas. And what's funny and it's really sad that California is doing more harm to the, the world's environment by buying all of the oil that they can from China from the rainforest. California is 70% responsible for the death of the rainforest in the oil that they purchase. This is absolutely hypocrisy at its finest. You can't buy that kind of hats off to Chevron, hats off to the investors and well done. Go to Texas, leave your, your, and all your thousands of high paying jobs that you're bringing to Texas. Please leave your voting policies in California. Here's a great article from David Blackman. You want to follow David Blackman on his substack, blackman.substack.com. Continuing EV bloodbath for Harris with a lot to answer for. The pollution from vehicles powered by fossil fuels, quote, has long harmed the health of communities, says Harris, around our country. But there is a solution to the problem, and it's parked right behind me. Electric cars, trucks, and buses, they don't produce tailpipe emissions like they irritate the nose and the eyes that decrease lung function. Harris added, this means manufacturing millions of electric cars and buses right here in our country, and that means outfitting thousands of EV vehicles and repair garages just like this one, and it means installing national network of EV chargers. This is the same woman that has put out $7.2 billion for, I believe, six, six, 60 chargers. You cannot do this. It is economically malfeasance in order to carry, uh, continue this charade. They had 60 buses created with $7.3 billion. Unbelievable waste of money. Unbelievable. Excellent article from David Blackman. There's some new information coming about the Inflation Reduction Act and how it's being used to go after voting blocks. I'll have more on that story later. 
But that is supposed to be the Inflation Reduction Act, and there's a lot of porculous information that was in that. Let's go to Shell. Shell initiates a two billion share back, two billion dollar share back. Wow. Shell is adjusting earnings of six point three billion for the second quarter. It's a three point five billion share back program uh, completed by the third quarter. And Shell's a, a buyback program, as it's posted, is better than expected numbers for the second quarter, announced a $2 billion in, in Q2, an impairment, a $1.6 billion impairment in slide revenue. Here's some rumblings that are going on between Shell and BP. You, we just heard me talk, Chevron moving to Texas. BP is really considering leaving the UK. And so when you consider leaving the UK and you have Shell looking to get listed on the New York Stock Exchange and you have other things going on, people are going to go where they can do friendly business. Just try to have a modern society without oil and gas. You can't make products from wind and solar. You have to use oil and gas. So you're not going to have a modern society without oil and gas. You need to have a balanced diet of all form of energy. So with that, would you please subscribe, like, if you're in the market for LNG, oil and gas, go to energynewsbeat.co forward slash um, trading desk, and it'll be in the show notes. And I just want to give a shout out to my neighbor. I was wearing my Trump hat out there the other day, and he's been voting a Democrat all of his life, and he's now voting for Trump. Said he can't afford uh, their policies. So anyway, have a great day. Hug your neighbor and try to make sure you're ready to vote in November. Have a great day. Talk to you all soon. Thank <laughs> you.